and and I live in an area where it has very very bad reception. So hopefully everything's good. All right, we'll try our best. We're well, we're live right now. How you been, man? Uh, I'm doing great, man. Uh, you know, uh, getting things done. How about you? It's good. Graduated from college, got a job, so I can't complain. Dude, I yeah. think last time we were kicking it was in like beginning band class back in high school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were swinging those trombones, huh? <laughs> yeah, the, the, the fucking plastic trombones, man. <laughs> <laughs> i uh i feel like we were just making noise in there <laughs> yeah i know that wasn't the prettiest band class i've been in for sure <laughs> but um what are you up yeah, to where, I, I remember where are you where are you at right up, now? Man? where are you at right now i'm on i'm on my house just just relaxing uh drinking my 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 most favorite drink uh a monster <laughs> is that what you're living on man getting you through the day yeah yeah i mean yeah i spend most of my time you know uh relaxing sleeping <laughs> <laughs> nice are you still living in san diego yeah uh i uh i live most of my time down there in uh downtown san diego i grew up there okay. uh but I moved out to, I moved uh, over to, you know, in Mount Helix area. Yeah. Yeah. That's a nice area. Yeah. Yeah. I lived around, I live around here. So yeah, it's, 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 it's a, a, a lot of change because over there in downtown San Diego, there's a lot of homeless. Right. And here is, it's a drastic change. You know, I, I feel comfortable here, you know, walking around in the nights, uh, doing stuff where in downtown San Diego, you feel kind of like, you know, not secure. So right. it's a drastic change, you know. Yeah. So w when did you move? Pretty recently. Uh, I got married. <laughs> Holy so, crap! So uh, you know. <laughs> when did that happen? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. If you, uh, I don't know if you can tell, but I I, I gained a lot of weight. You know, <laughs> they say that uh, when you when you get married, uh, you know, you get you tend to gain weight because you you're in a happy relationship, right? But uh <laughs> yeah i got married at 19 dang dude and you're, you're 22 right now right or 23 yeah yeah 22 22 that's crazy dude so yeah you got, you got married like right after you graduated from high school yeah i think I, yeah i don't know no, i think i was about to be 20 i was like 19 three quarters or something like that but you know i was still 19 you know <laughs> yeah you know I uh where'd you meet the lucky lady? <laughs> oh uh <laughs> so very long story. Uh my niece, she had a, a quinceanera. Yeah. And uh one of one of her damas, which is one of the people who who dance in the in the thingy, yeah. uh she has this older sister, and I indirectly met her. Her older sister through one of her damas oh. and you know it's a very long story but you know that's where i met her you know she she invited me to church and stuff you know I, i'm not religious in any sense but you know i i went you know i started to go yeah you know just to impress her you know to see that i'm open-minded which i am open-minded but you know and uh you know that's how it all started you know and there is a point in you know, in our, in our lives where, you know, I saw that she, she's the one that I want, you know, to yeah. marry. <laughs> hey, how, how long were you dating her before you got married? Uh, maybe about four months, <laughs> but, Whoa. but we were best friends. Uh, I knew her for, for quite a long, quite a time. I was like 16 or seven, right. 17 when I met her. Okay. And we knew we were like best friends throughout the whole times, you know, like about three years, we were really close. So, you know, it's not like I barely met her and then I wanted to marry her, you know, so we know we knew each other quite well. Okay. Yeah. That makes a little more sense, but yeah. sounds like you guys were definitely in love if you <laughs> got married that quick. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, well, yeah. Well, we were definitely in love. <laughs> yeah. Well, congrats, man. That's awesome to hear. 
so you're just living with her now in Mount Helix. Uh, any any more plans? Are you trying to build a family already? <laughs> oh no, man. Uh, I mean, I don't know if you know, but I focus a lot in uh in in money management myself. Like I try to uh take care of my money, you know, investing and stuff like that. Right. And one of the things I I grew up in in a family or in a culture is that. Uh, a lot of uh, young adults or teenagers, they, they, they have kids too early in life. And I'm not saying it's a mistake, but it's, it certainly limits your, your options yeah, to what you can do in the future, you know? And so I don't want to have kids too early. Yeah, I understand that. Definitely, you got to sacrifice a lot of time um, to spend time raising your kids and if you want to, yeah, like develop your career, whatever it might be, that makes sense. Um, so are you doing money management for a company or is it more your own fund? Oh, <laughs> oh it's my own money. I mean, okay. I, I, I have my job, you know, but I, I, uh, I try to increase my wealth, you know, right. have passive income. Yeah. Like that's like, uh, my passive think uh generates me more money than my yeah. normal job so it's quite what do you it's do quite funny <laughs> so i uh i clean commercial buildings you know yeah. i clean lab i clean laboratories gotcha uh i have also i i clean uh uh normal offices i mean it's it's good money i don't have to be you know working a nine, nine to five job you know i go clean a building, you know, finish in one hour, go to the next, you know, I, I work maybe like four hours every day. So, yeah. you know, I'm not like stressing out about a nine to five job, you know, or after hour meetings, none of that. Wow. So your, your passive income must be going pretty well then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, when you have a lot of time in your hands, you know, there's definitely, uh, ways that you can learn how to have you know passive income which is very helpful you know I think I would have not been able to marry so young if it weren't for this knowledge that is basically free out there you know on the internet right so when did you start getting into investing and are you mostly investing in like stocks uh yes uh I started when I was uh 19 I start, I mean, I, I know it sounds like a lot of money at, uh, for, for my age at the time. I mean, I started with around $20,000, which I had saved. Nice. I, I live with my parents. I live with my parents, you know, all my life, you know, so they weren't charging me a lot of rent and I was working as well. Right. So, you know, I was, I was able to save up $20,000 by age yeah. 19 and, uh, you know, it's all relative, you know, with how much money you invest, your returns, it's relative. You know, if you get a 10% return on $200, 200, it's $20. It doesn't sound like, like a lot, but when you start to increase your, your net, uh, your net worth, you know, obviously the return is much higher, you know? Wow. And, uh, how did you, like, what made you decide to get started with it? Uh, I grew up in a family which uh, does not have a lot of uh, a lot of money, but also we don't we didn't have a lot of opportunities. You know, I think our culture, uh, growing up Mex Mexican, they don't teach you these things. You know about money. They don't talk about money in general. I think that's like a like a taboo in in our culture, which is which is truly uh, it's sad because. I think these things should be uh, taught to, to our children, you know, how to generate more money, you know, uh, taking better choices. Right. And I saw this in my family and I, that was not mentioned and I wanted to learn because I saw other su successful people and I wanted to be like them, you know? Yeah. I wish that was something that um, our high school uh, did like went over more too. Cause I'm sure that could have helped like a lot of kids at Mission Bay High School where we went. There was really no emphasis on that. And like people graduate and they're like, what do I do with my money now? And, you know, just spend it on pointless things. Don't save it or invest it. 
And yeah, I wish that was a thing too, but that's cool that you got into it. Did you learn, like, did you just see like something on YouTube and that like sparked your interest? <laughs> or? It's funny. I, I, I think you might have seen this video or a lot of uh, your viewers might have seen it. Uh, I don't know if you know who's Ricky Gutierrez. I don't. Okay, so I remember one time uh, I was showering. I like to watch videos when I shower. It's funny, but, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I go on YouTube and I'm showering. And uh, this video of this guy, like, he's a day trader. Yeah. And, like, he was showing how much money he makes uh, investing in the stock market. And they make a comparison between him and some guy working, uh, doing uh, food delivery. And... The food delivery guy, he made, I think, about $60 in that whole day. Meanwhile, this other dude, he made, I think, like like $12,000 in one day. You know, ridiculous amount of money, you know. Right. I mean, obviously, I know when things sound too good to be true, you're kind of skeptical, you know. Yeah, definitely. I mean, but I gave it a try, and I want to see if it's true. I, I have been hear hearing about a lot of this lately, and, you know, I started to do uh uh investing myself and obviously like i said before your returns they're all relative to how much money you put into the stock market you know exactly yeah so after you saw this yeah. video you were like i'm gonna do some research uh like what did, what did you start researching to kind of inform yourself if yeah it was the right decision uh so I, I started to read like uh, articles, uh, just general information. I mean, first of all, the first thing I, I did was see which broker or platform allowed me to invest my money. You know, at right. the time when I started, you know, I don't know if you heard of the app called Robinhood. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> who, has, uh, <laughs> who hasn't now? Yeah, uh, you know, I, I got into it, you know, it was so easy to use, I mean, I was like, okay, I'm going to start investing, you know, such an e easy platform, you know, and uh, I, I made money at the beginning, you know, I remember I put money into Bitcoin, uh, I, I bought like maybe like three coins or four coins at the time, gotcha. but, you know, when you're just beginning, you're, you're pulling your money away because <laughs> you don't, you don't know what you're doing right <laughs> yes but that's where you know but that's when <laughs> that's when you have to keep doing more research you know and i started to read books on like investments you know how to ma manage your money and i mean i i learned quite a lot you know yeah definitely and so Cause I just started investing a few months ago too. And a lot of people have been telling me like, you know, that day trading is like way too risky and you shouldn't do it. And, you know, just stick it out through the long term. <laughs> but you, yeah. you obviously yeah, yeah. You're taking money out because you have, you're like using it as a supplement to your job. I'm assuming you're day trading. Like, what would you say to people that would be like, you should just hold your money <laughs> and not sell till later? Uh, okay. So first of all, it's like a, it's a double-edged sword, you know, yeah. uh, you don't want to, you don't want to obviously play with money. You cannot afford to lose. That's right. I think a, a, a thumb rule to remember money that you can't afford to lose, which would be your rent money, you know, stuff that's going to make you survive. You don't want to invest that money. But other than that, I mean, once you understand the rules of the stock market, you know, the tech technicals and all that stuff, you can day trade, but not with all your money. You know, you just want to play with a fraction of your overall portfolio into day trading. And yeah. the remaining, I think it should just be long term for sure. No question about it. Long term investment. It's way more better and they, it offers greater returns in the long term. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's good to know. And uh, with your, I guess, small fraction of day trading, um, yeah. do you, what type of stocks do you usually invest that in when you're doing <laughs> uh, So for example, you want to play with stocks that have a, a lot of volume. Uh, 
they they have a lot of, by volume I, I mean a lot of people are trading it you know right so you know you want to play with stocks that are relevant maybe you want to play with electric vehicle stocks or cannabis stocks uh yeah you know these stocks that uh have a lot of uh tendency to be invested by young young people you know right that makes sense yes i mean obviously obviously you know you can't win all trades you know in day trading that's why you learn rules like when to cut your losses you know when to when to take profits but you cannot win all trades you know you you have to understand that <laughs> yeah yeah and i guess sometimes luck is just something that plays into it for sure um did you happen to <laughs> yeah yeah i'm gonna have to ask this cause, just because it was in recent news but did you happen to invest in gamestop or amc was that something you took advantage of <laughs> Oh man, I made a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that's I, I put uh I put money <laughs> I put money in AMC. I uh <laughs> nice. It's a regret that I didn't buy more. Yeah. <laughs> but I did make a lot of money. I remember it was like it was around 2 30 uh PM. Yeah. So it was about 30 minutes before market hours closed i mean after hours closed you okay. know i still had 30 minutes to buy amc stock yeah. and you know i was i was reading through 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 wall street bets on reddit i don't know if you know what that is yeah i think everyone's heard of it now <laughs> yeah yeah okay so i was reading throughout and I was reading so many like posts about AMC and GameStop, you know, I had already heard about GameStop, but not about AMC. And, and I was like, okay, I'll take it. I'll take a quick try, you know? So at two 30, I bought about 3000 shares uh, at around $6 average. You know, oh. I wasn't expecting a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't expecting a lot of money to be profit, uh, profited off my initial investment. You know, so I bought 3,000 shares, you know, the market closed. I went through my day, you know, I went to sleep. The next morning I woke up, man. <laughs> like, oh my God. I was like, I was like, holy shit, man. Like, I couldn't believe it. You know, I put about $20,000 in AMC when I saw, man, that thing had already appreciated, like, another 55k man like i was like oh my god i was shitting i was shitting myself <laughs> <laughs> i can imagine holy god. yeah so i i sold man i so i got out i mean i understand the movement why people were doing it yeah but i i sold around 20 22 dollars nice. i sold at 22 so that's great um, great return for sure for I mean, yeah dude yeah i because i i know people who invested in GameStop and they did they were making a lot of money but then they started getting greedy and they were like you know yeah. if I just wait longer it's gonna go up more so I mean that was smart of you I even I don't know how high GameStop or AMC reached but I'm sure like ah uh, yeah it went out. around I think 23 or 24 but okay. it was like it was quick it was a quick fluctuation in price you know it didn't stay above 20 dollars for a, a quick for a long time so I sold as fast as I could, man, you know, yeah. and I got out and I didn't look again because, I mean, these are, like you said, it's a lot of luck. Yeah. And you can't be lucky uh, all the time. You know, if you get lucky once, it's, it's, there's no guarantee it's going to happen again to you. So might as well take profits and forget about it, you know. <laughs> yeah, man. Good. Well, good for you. If you uh, don't mind me asking, how much do you think you've multiplied, like, your beginning net worth to <laughs> yeah if you don't want to answer the question you know that's fine uh, you don't have to say the number you could just say a multiple <laughs> uh maybe so i started with like uh, maybe like maybe like eight eight or nine times probably something like that all right <laughs> multiplied by my initial investment something like that you know <laughs> but that's why I, I emphasize the I think it's very important, man, to to go long term because I was very foolish at the beginning to think that day trading was all. 
in the right. stock market. Like, like that was like the way to go. And, you know, I don't know if you have heard of a company called NIO, N-I-O. Yeah, I have some shares of NIO. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I had 25,000 shares of that. <laughs> I had 25,000 shares at like two, $2 and something, man. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I sold yeah. too early. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. And I think that's, that's, that's going to be the biggest, biggest regret of my life. Like I could have made probably like $2 million, man. If I would have held on when Neil reached up to like $68 a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> you oh. know, it's, it's so sad, man. <laughs> It's all right, man. Well, you're not doing too bad for yourself. So, and everyone, I yeah, think, yeah, I mean, moments, you know, if only I did that. Yeah, I mean, that's why I, I, uh, I got another chance with this other stock, which I am looking, I'm looking at a long term. I'm gonna hold no matter what happens. It's very similar to Neo. It's called a, uh, it's called Xpeng, X P E N G. I've heard of that. That's the ticker. The ticker. The ticker is XPEV. I uh, I put, I bought a uh, like four thousand two hundred shares. Yeah. My average, my average is around forty nine dollars, and uh, I, I am down on it, a couple of thousand dollars, but yeah. I am looking long term. I do not intend to miss out, like yeah. I did with Neo, and I hope you and and your viewers understand, you know, the importance of being patient. That's right. very important. Right. And also just for tax purposes too. <laughs> You'll definitely say yeah. Something. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. So so with all the money you're making, are you do you have any goals to spend it? Or are you just trying to reinvest your money? Or what what's the goal to have with your financial freedom? Uh <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to live below my means. I I can definitely afford more stuff, but I I I don't want to work beyond 30 years of age. You know, that's my goal. I want to retire before 30. You know, I I, I don't want my wife to have kids and I'm working. You know, 24 seven. That's not my goal. So yeah. I'm trying to keep my my bills like very minimal. You know. Yeah. That's funny. I That's mean, funny. I have def. It's funny that you said that because the name of this podcast is 30 and under. And at the end of the podcast, I always ask, what is your oh. goal before you turn 30? Oh, you just yeah. answered it right there. Hey, oh, <laughs> sure. I, 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 I didn't ask questions then. <laughs> I, I did not even think about that. <laughs> I always tell, I have always told that to my family, like, come on, you guys have to invest as well, but uh, you know, Sometimes they don't listen, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is is most of your family from Mexico? Uh yes, yes. Uh, my uh, my mother, she uh, she, she was born in Cuernavaca. Wait, no, she was born in Morelos. She was born in Morelos, is and you know that, they came to the United. Where's that in huh? Mexico? Sorry, my Mexican geography isn't great. Where, where is that in Mexico? I don't know, man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, All right, well, sorry, keep it's, going. it's somewhere in Mexico, but you know, <laughs> yeah, they are. She was born in uh, in Morelos, and you know, she came to the to the United States maybe like maybe like twenty five years ago, and huh. around yeah, around twenty five years ago, you know, she came with no money, nothing. You know, she has worked hard, but her work has no, no, uh, no reward. Basically, in sense of financially, she has no access assets to prove her work, and that's the thing that many people just think it's work hard, hustle, you know, grind. But it's not about that. You know, there's more to it. You know, you have to create something out of your money. You know, right. I'm, yeah, I'm sure that probably yeah was just like the education she has that that was just never something she learned and 
now everyone can, is fortunate enough to learn it because of the internet, but I'm sure back then, you know, that must have been hard for her. Um, is your dad? Yeah, and my, my dad, uh, yeah. My my dad, uh, my real dad. I don't know where he's from. <laughs> okay. But, uh, he left us when I was. He left. He left us when I was. Uh, I was still a baby, so okay. I didn't really have contact with him. But I have. I have an awesome stepdad, which okay. you know he 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 uh he raised me up. Yeah. He he's from Veracruz. I don't know if you have heard of it. Yeah, I've heard of Veracruz. Yeah. That's yeah, he's from Veracruz, so you know. <laughs> Yeah. And does does he work too? Yes, he uh he's he does landscaping. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> yeah, nice. I mean that's like that's like a, a typical stereotype, you know, <laughs> landscape and you know, uh Latinos, Mexicans, you know, what can you do, you know? <laughs> yeah. What why is that? Is it do you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I I don't know. I, I mean, there is a lot of money to be made in landscaping. You know, my dad, you know, he makes good money on it. I don't know, man. I, I feel like a lot of like, since a lot of these people, they don't go to college, you know, it's a lot of their work has to be laborious, you know? Right. 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 Yeah. When, when they uh, moved from Mexico, were they able to get like a high school education or uh no <laughs> yeah because it was no. it was crazy man i was talking yeah. to, to brandon morales in one of my episodes actually yeah he was talking about how his father didn't even like he he just went to second grade and then like dropped out and started working and that's crazy yeah well i i think my mother finished high school in yeah. mexico you know she got the normal education but you know in spanish right but in here like she didn't grow up like you know to speak english fluently right yes and your stepdad too uh yeah uh actually i think he he only went to fifth grade <laughs> that's in so mexico crazy. i know because <laughs> like me coming from like the family i do I, I never think about that like other people's parents like have been through stuff like that you know just like a yeah. different world sometimes you don't you don't realize um yeah man that's crazy um but uh have you been trying to teach your parents about investing now that that's like a big part of your life uh yeah I have but like I said before I I, I still think it's a taboo uh okay. in a lot of cultures to talk about money right and as as soon as you start to talk about why do you think that is that is a taboo <sighs> It's a good question. I, I think it's it's deeply ingrained in our mind to think of it as a something like an insult. Like, I don't know. You start to talk about money and then they, they feel offended. Uh, and, yeah. it, and it's not just them. I see it across like different different cultures, you know? Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's because they think you're like judging them based on the amount of money they make instead of like the person they are like maybe that that's my yeah. best guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah I know who knows the true answer to that <laughs> yeah so it's not something it's like something you try and then they kind of shut it down or we talk about it but sometimes you can tell they're not interested like okay uh you you expect them to be like um uh ask questions oh like how do I get started or uh can you help me like create a financial plan or stuff like that right and you know when you when you realize that you're just the one talking to yourself <laughs> you know about that subject you're just like oh, okay so okay I'm done <laughs> you know? gotcha yeah you're like that's not my best use of time but um have you yeah. been trying to teach anyone else because I'm sure like you've been doing this for a few years now and I'm sure like some people yeah. would be willing to like hear what you've learned. Do you, do you try to teach anyone else? Uh, yeah, I talk to a lot of people. I mean, I have, I have several things I always tell them. Like uh, I, I read a book called the richest man in Babylon. Yeah. Have you heard of that book? No. Okay. So I, I, I try to tell them 
a lot of these people like the stuff I learned from that book. Yeah. So this book teaches you, uh, you know, f- how, how to acquire wealth and how to keep it. Because, you know, you might be able to acquire it, but there's no point if you're not able to keep it because you're just going to burn your money. As, as soon as you're gaining money, you're just burning through it, you know. Right. So I, I uh, one of the, the rules I always tell them is like to pay yourself first. You know, you get your paycheck and you think you're earning that money for yourself. But in reality, you have to pay stuff. You have to pay your Internet your rent, uh, your car payment, your insurance. Yeah. And then you forget to pay, you, for, you forget to pay yourself by that. I mean, you get your paycheck, you pay yourself at least 10% of your income. So if you get $2,000 on your paycheck, yeah, you take $200 right. and you pay yourself and then that money you invest it. Yeah. To have it for the future. And yeah. I mean, there, and I mean, there's more rules that I, 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 and truths, I try to tell these people, you know, I can go more deeply, but uh, I don't know if you want me to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, first, I want to ask, like, who are like these people that you like give this information to? Is it like your <laughs> friends? Or do you have like a YouTube channel? Uh, oh, I have friends. Uh, I work at a federal building cleaning. Right. Uh, I don't want to say which, uh, which, which uh which branch of federal building because i might get in trouble okay <laughs> but you know i work at a federal federal building as a you know cleaning the building uh and i have become really good friends with a lot of the people there right and i spend a lot of time talking to them you know maybe about every time i go i probably spend like an hour of my my day there just talking to them about uh, investments we share ideas which stocks to buy and stuff like that yeah and, you know, I have learned a lot of a lot of things from them gotcha yeah that's cool um have you thought about like doing a YouTube channel because now I see like all these people coming up on YouTube like showing their portfolios like live and showing their data live and just giving advice uh i thought about it but uh i'm not too sure uh, i'm not too sure about it because i don't want people to come and then like try to burn down my house for giving them the wrong (laughs) stock to pick you know yeah i get you. <laughs> i mean obviously a lot of these people you know they might see my videos they might be people from school that they remember me and stuff they might see me on the freeway they throw rocks at my car you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i i get that definitely you get some publicity from being on the internet with your thoughts and also i mean i i, I don't think i'm the best person at, on camera <laughs> so you know hey, you're doing great I, <laughs> Yeah, so I don't think I would be able to handle the pressure. <laughs> gotcha. No, I, I understand that. Well, um, yeah, if you want to just share a few of like the main like goals you have when investing that you learned like through various sources and like through your experience, that'd be great. Yeah, so uh, uh, rule of thumb, don't day trade good companies. Never do that. Yeah. Uh, if you if you find a good company, go long term. Uh, if there's bad news, if the fundamentals are still there, but find by fundamentals I mean like their sales, you know their their earnings, all of that stuff. If it's still there, you know just hold on. You know stocks go up and down. If it dips, you buy more. Uh, don't gamble your money. <laughs> uh, you might get lucky on good on some stocks but it's not always gonna happen you know and obviously don't invest money you cannot afford to lose yeah yeah those are uh, yeah and i mean yeah i mean that's <laughs> i mean obviously that's very general there there's like other rules that 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 might exist but those rules have have saved me you know time and and money now yeah. that i'm 
now that I understand more, if I if I should have if I should have followed those rules when I was younger, you know, I mean, right. my life would have been. I mean, my life my life has changed, but there would have been a greater impact in my life, you know. Yeah, no, and that's why I think it's like really valuable for you to mention it because whoever's watching, like, there's a good chance they don't even know those rules like when they're getting started and investing and just starting to learn um but yeah since yeah because many people they just yeah go ahead go ahead oh yeah it's because uh many people they just want to get rich quick you know and fast yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, they they treat they treat the they treat the stock market uh, as a casino yeah and that's all they want they just want like quick buck and you know a millionaire uh the next month that's not how it works you know a lot of this is just patience finding good companies you know yeah for sure for sure and um since you already asked the question that i ask at the end of the podcast um i was wondering once if you achieve your goal of retiring at 30 you know what do you want to do with all the money you have for retirement do you want to like travel around the country or buy a sweet place, buy an even fancier car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, I always, I ask myself that. I, I certainly want a lot of things, but right now I obviously have to withhold myself from those things. I think I would want to travel a lot. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of stuff I want to see. Not, ne- not necessarily like the city, but I, I, uh, I would want to see like uh, historical places, you know, like uh, the Egyptian pyramids, uh, the statues that were created for like uh, famous people like, you know, Giordano Bruno. Have you heard of him? Of who? Sorry, Boo, you cut out there for a second. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. So I would want to see, you know, uh, historical statues like that of Giordano Bruno. I don't know if you have heard of him. Uh, No, I haven't. Well, he was like like, like an astronomer at, at his time, you know, it was created for him. You know, not necessarily, like I said, like city, city, you know, more like nature, historical places. I would really want to see them before uh, or after I turn 30, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, that's an ambitious goal, man. And I hope you accomplish it um, before this pod, I'm going to end this podcast. Just want to see if you want to shout out anyone or let anyone know about anything cool, cool you're doing in the next few months or years. Okay. Uh <laughs> I, I definitely want to in uh get a, the new Corvette the C8. Uh, All right, nice. I'm waiting for I'm waiting <laughs> I'm waiting for the prices to like normalize because the prices have been like going beyond MSRP, which is I think kind of dumb. I'm waiting for the dust to settle for the MSRP to be put for the car, you know, and I want to you know build my own car you know get the net and like build it you know make it faster yeah well that's a good goal man yeah i I really appreciate having you on it's been awesome talking to you and uh hopefully we can do this again sometime soon you catch that hey simon (laughs) yeah Oh, sorry. You cut out. You cut out for a second. <laughs> oh man, I, I was just saying it, it was it was great having you on, and uh, hopefully, really appreciate it. And hopefully, we can do this again sometime soon. Yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, and I, I really hope your audience, you know, they if they caught the glimpse of me mentioning the the book called uh, "The Richest Man in Babylon." Yeah, it would be awesome for you and for your viewers to read the book. You know, I th- one of the rules in that book is to invest in yourself, you know, to gain long, to gain knowledge yeah. and buying that book. It's one of the first steps you can do 
to change your life forever. Yeah. All right, man. Well, those are wise words and uh, look forward to speaking with you again. All right. See you, man. Yeah, man. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye.